Hey there, it's Gregson. Welcome back to Shifting Lanes. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Ford Mustang and what you need to know about this legendary pony car before you research it, compare it to others in its class, or buy it. And even if you're not in the market for a Mustang, stick around and watch all the way to the end because I'll go over all of the information I've gathered to tell you if you should check out a Mustang of any year or if this is a car buyers should avoid. And yes, I'll tell you a very hard truth about the Mustang that's definitely going to anger a lot in the car community. In this video, I'll go over what to look for on the Mustang overall as well. Things like a few common issues, any major service bulletins, any major recalls, reliability ratings from trusted sources, and what's new for the 2021 version compared to the 2020 model, along with what to expect for 2022. We here at Shifting Lanes have driven the Mustang many times, including the four-cylinder EcoBoost, the GT, the Shelby GT350, and more recently, the GT500 at a Ford Press event. Our man Chad even owns a 2015 S550 GT, with some pretty good mods and has plans to supercharge it, shooting for 700 or more horsepower. So I can come into this video confident that I'll be able to give you a good representation of the Mustang overall. And if you're here because of this one, consider watching our other content as well. We make tons of videos about new car reviews, other what to know videos, consumer advice recommendations, and automotive news. If you'd like to see any of those, check the description below for playlists of everything we do, or click the card above for a hand-picked video for you. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up at the end if you enjoyed it or found it informative. So let's be honest here. Do I really need to make a video on the Mustang? Does it really need an introduction? Should I be making this video? Probably not at all. I just love the platform, the car, and the history, so I wanted to make a video that may help those looking for more information on it outside of your typical review or vlog. With that being said, there's a lot to go over on the Mustang. First, let's talk about the current model, which gives you a truly enormous amount of options. So if you're looking for a commuter car that looks cool or a budget supercar, then the Mustang has you covered. In 2021, you'll get 10 different trims to choose from if you count the fastback and the convertible as separate cars, which you should. These trims range from a four-cylinder EcoBoost fastback starting at $27,205 and going all the way up to the insane GT500, which will set you back a minimum of $72,900 whole US American freedom bucks. Power is just as varied as the starting MSR. P. The base four-cylinder EcoBoost produces 310 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque, while the Shelby GT500 gives you 760 horsepower and 625 pound-feet of torque. That's a massive 450 horsepower gap from base to top of the line. There aren't a ton of models out there that can offer that sort of range in engine performance. Now, no matter what the Mustang EcoBoost fans tell you, the best bang for the buck is the GT trim with 460 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque with a starting MSRP of 36 to 85. The GT is one of the best power per dollar ratios in the whole of the auto industry. You can also opt for a GT premium trim for 40,285, which gives you a host of upgrades like 19 inch wheels with dedicated summer tires, bigger Brembo brakes, a larger radiator, a wing on the fastback version, torsen and diffs, bespoke chassis tuning, a K brace and heavy duty front springs among other improvements. The average price of a new car is around $40,000 right now and getting all of that performance for a around that price with the GT Performance Pack is a nearly unmatched in-class or in the sports car realm offer, really, unless you go with a used M3 or something similar. That being said, the EcoBoost version with a tune, downpipe, and a few upgrades can also get you close to 400 horsepower at the crank for far cheaper, though your warranty will be completely out of the window. So we recommend the GT over the EcoBoost for that reason alone. Plus, you'll get the glorious Coyote V8 soundtrack to go along with your sleek pony car. New for 2021 is the Mach 1 trim, starting at $55,300, and seems to be a glorious blending of things from the past the GT Performance Pack 2 trim, to the Bullet trim, to the Shelby GT350 trim. This is no parts bin special though, but certain best parts of all of those vehicles have been combined into the ethos of the Mach 1 to bring you a great performance experience. Power in the Mach 1 is also bumped to 480 from the GT's 460 horsepower, but the Mach 1 is a much better handling and track focused version of the Mustang than the GT. Apart from the trims, what else is new for 2021? Nothing. The Mach 1 is it, but that's not all that surprising for a few reasons. First, the updated S550 Mustang got a refresh in 2018. So 
It's a pretty new version, and it wasn't up for a full redesign on Ford's timeline. Second, Ford doesn't really make a ton of changes to their core models unless there's something very wrong with it, or it's due for the aforementioned full redesign at the end of its life cycle. Thus, the Mustang stays pretty much as is from 2020. What's new for 2022? We don't really know yet. However, given how 2021 has gone with a microchip shortage and Ford having to shut down Mustang production for extended periods of time, I'm willing to speculate that 2022 isn't going to see anything new either. Maybe a new trim level or something like that? Sure, but that's probably probably about it. Look for a full redesign of the Mustang in the distant future, maybe even 2026 or later, and that's when we should really start to see the Mustang blossom into its newest form. With all this in mind, what if you can't afford a new awesome Mustang, or just like the older ones better and want a good deal? Well, then you'll need to do your research, and there we've got you covered too. Let's start out by talking about some past issues with older Mustangs. Carcomplaints.com is a great resource when looking at complaints and overall issues for cars. I frequent this site almost daily, looking for information on cars to better inform all of you. They're not a sponsor of this video. They probably don't even know I'm making these videos. That's just a good website to get all of your information from. There are a bunch of issues for the Mustangs across all years, but a few of the biggest are corrosion on the hood on the 2010 Mustang with an average cost to fix of $1,700 at an average mileage of 47,000 miles. Next is paint blistering on the 2007 Mustang with an average cost to fix of $800 at an average mileage of 55,000 miles. And finally, corrosion on the hood once again on the 2012 Mustang with an average cost to fix of $900 and an average mileage of 39,000 miles. Clearly, Mustangs have had paint issues and body issues over the years. Something to keep in mind with these three issues is that car complaints is made up of user or consumer reported issues. So these aren't necessarily things you would encounter on an older model, just what others have logged on this site. It's also worth noting that even given all of the years worth of data compiled here, there aren't a ton of mechanical complaints, showing that the Mustang in particular, at least according to these consumers doesn't have a multitude of mechanical issues. Also, according to this data, the 2005 and 2006 model years are the ones with the most amount of complaints. There are very few complaints for the more recent years from 2018 through 2020. Next, let's talk about the technical service bulletins or TSBs for the Mustang. If you didn't know, a TSB is a communication from the manufacturer, like Ford, that documents recommended procedures for repairing vehicles, and they happen when there are several occurrences of an unanticipated problem. For example, if consumers keep reporting that their doors won't lock, because a wire in the door is known to disconnect from its harness, and it's happening across many different shops or dealers, the manufacturer will look into it, and if there's a fix, issue a TSB so that if it happens again, the fix is easily understood and rectified. The manufacturer may also find fixes proactively and issue a TSB if the fix does not require a recall. You might be surprised to learn that there are hundreds of TSBs listed for almost all model years of the Mustang. However, it's important to remember that this isn't necessarily a standard for reliability. Almost all cars, and yes, even the Toyota Camry, have tons of TSBs for each year they are produced, so take this into consideration when doing your research. I won't go into all the TSBs they list because that would be its own video, maybe its own video series, but if you're more DIY inclined, it's worth poking around in the TSBs should you find something wrong with your vehicle and want to fix it yourself. You may find a TSB with a fix you need and could save yourself hundreds if not thousands in repair costs with the right know-how. You can find TSBs listed on sites like Car Complaints or just through a quick Google search, among others, as TSBs need to be public knowledge by law. But I will caveat that if you do find something wrong and you own a newer model, ask the dealer first, as you'll likely have a warranty that should cover you for almost anything. And on that note, let's talk about any recalls the Mustang has. You can find these along with other complaints, manufacturer communications, and investigation information at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA for short. The Mustang has many different recalls associated with many different model years, but here are a few to watch out for and the years that they relate to. For the 2000 Mustang, fuel leak slash fire for aftermarket fuel filters and quick connectors. Failure of this connection could lead to fuel spillage and in the presence of an ignition source, a fire could occur. Certain aftermarket fuel filters sold under the Purolator brand name shipped from January 16th through June 2nd of 2006 for use on the above listed passenger vehicles, the Mustang, uh, as well as some others. Due to incorrect design, the quick connectors may not fully seat with the tube interface, even though the person making the connection may believe that the quick connector is fully attached. Ford's fix was to replace the filters for free, which is a pretty easy fix. But this is interesting because it's the first time I've actually come across a recall with an aftermarket part listed. That doesn't mean that these don't exist. It's just the first time I've come across it in any vehicle I've ever researched for these videos. Next up is doors may open while driving on the 2015 Mustang, which is just as bad as it sounds. A door that is not securely latched could open while the vehicle is in motion, increasing the risk of injury to a vehicle occupant. Ford's fix 
fix was replace the side door latches if necessary. An instrument cluster may go blank on startup for the 2019 Mustang. A blank instrument cluster will not show important information like vehicle speed, fuel or temperature level, or safety system warnings. Driving with an inoperative cluster can increase the risk of a crash, obviously. Ford's fix here is to reprogram the instrument panel cluster if needed. Now, I always include recall information in these videos, and I almost always get a comment on them saying something to the effect of, man, this is recall stuff. Who cares? Just get it fixed at the dealer for free. No one needs to know this. What a waste of a video. And well, you guys sort of have a point there. All recalls can be fixed for free, so why even mention them? But you wouldn't believe the amount of people who don't even do recalls at all on their cars. According to a 2018 survey by Stericycle Expert Solutions, more than 1,100 Americans were surveyed and found that only 87% said that they acted on recalls only most of the time, which boils down to likely a far less percentage of people actually getting work done. But it gets worse from there, unfortunately. The NHTSA itself did some of their own research and tracked recall information through vehicle identification numbers or VINs. When they came to a conclusion, they found that a staggering 61% of recall vehicles get repaired. That means that a potential 39% of vehicles out there still could have a recall on them. So yeah, I include all of this for a reason. Get your damn recalls done, people. They're literally free. Now, these aren't the only recalls out there on the Mustang, but these are the most interesting that I could find as they all involve crashing or personal injury or just unsafe driving conditions. And like I said above, people don't do recalls. So if you do own any of these models or you want to purchase any of these models or want to purchase any models of any car, really, be sure to have these recalls and others checked and done by your dealer for free. Next, let's talk about overall reliability on the Mustang. Consumer Reports ranks the Mustang as number five in the sports slash sporty cars over $40,000 segment with a solid overall score of 76 out of 100. It's bested only by the BMW 2 Series, the Porsche 718 Boxster, Toyota Supra, and BMW Z4, which is pretty good company to be in. They also give it a recommended rating on top of that. For reliability, it's on par with all of the competitors I've listed. Car and Driver also has the Mustang rated highly with the GT500 taking the second spot and the normal Mustang taking the third spot. In first on Car and Driver's list is the Camaro ZL1. So for the more normal models that aren't tracker performance focused only, Car and Driver ranks the Mustang highest. They too recommend the GT trim as their go-to option. Overall, the Mustang seems to be a pretty reliable car now and in the past, honestly. Of course, there will be instances of it being unreliable or the Mustang really beat up versions of it out there that won't be that great. But that happens with any car, honestly. The Mustang historically doesn't look any less reliable than your run of the mill sedan, which is impressive considering it's in a sports car category. So based on everything I've gathered and with our extensive experience with the platform, here's the real hard truth about the Mustang. And I'm sure it's gonna ruffle your feathers, especially if you're not a Mustang fanboy. It's a really good car, guys. And you all should think so too. None of this Ford is found on road dead crap. Honestly, all the Dodge fans and all the Chevy fans should be behind this 100%. And here is why. Cars like the Mustang, the Challenger, the Charger, and Camaro, unfortunately, guys, the days are numbered for all the internal combustion versions of these cars. I mean, we even have a Mustang Mach-E now, and that's the electric version. If you're an ICE fan, if you're a big V8 fan, if you're a car fan as they sit today, Stop complaining about the Mustang being garbage. It just isn't. And honestly, the same holds true for the Challenger, Charger, and Camaro. Yes, they all have their flaws, but so does any car. There's no such thing as a perfect car. And constantly berating each other, each car, because of these minor flaws means that we're going to see them go away much, much faster than they rightfully should. Trust me when I say that car companies listen to consumers in this area. They see what you are saying online. Yes, their motives aren't always to make enthusiasts happy, and yeah, they all search for the most money out of the most models, but they do know when enthusiasts aren't happy. If you all are complaining about these cars collectively, they're going to get rid of them for more profits on EVs within the next 10 to 15 years. If you want to keep your special Mustangs and your special other cars, stop complaining about everyone else. Yes, the Mustang is a great car. Get over it. Accept it. And above all else, love it while it's still around in this form. You are all going to be really sad when the V8 is gone. And with how things are going, that will happen eventually. Lastly, with all of this being said, do we recommend you go 
in to buy a Mustang if you've made the decision to purchase? The answer to that question is a big time yes. If you want a budget-friendly pony car or a sports car adjacent offering, the Mustang will not steer you wrong. It has options for days, a generationally great engine in the Coyote V8, and one of the coolest top-end models out there in the Shelby GT500. If you have the means, go get a new one now and enjoy it. Your heart and your wallet will thank you. I hope that this video does help you in making your buying decision a bit easier or has made you a better informed owner. If you disagree with me, let me hear it in the comments. Do you think the Mustang is really garbage? And I don't think you should, but I do want to hear it. I want to start the conversation. Let me hear it in the comments. Are you a Ford guy? Are you a Chevy guy? Are you a Dodge guy? I just want to hear from you. Let me know. Let's start the conversation and maybe we can find some common ground here. If you want to follow us outside of YouTube, you can find us at Shifting Lanes on Facebook and Instagram, where we post about the cars we review, our personal cars, and industry news and adventures. Again, my name is Gregson. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, until next time.